Hello and welcome to Restoration Ministries. I'm Pastor Jeff. It's a great uh, opportunity to be with you today. And we're going to talk about trust, the foundation of restoration. Uh, I've got some, uh, before we get into that, I want to give you just some uh, exciting things that are upcoming. Uh, look uh, and keep in touch with our Facebook page. Also, uh, you might want to keep an eye on Instagram. We're going to be launching a new podcast uh, within the next several weeks. We're excited to uh, be bringing that to you. Uh, Tracy and I have had this laid on our hearts for some time, and uh, we're, I think, at the point where we're getting ready to launch. Uh, last night, we recorded the first uh, episode, and uh, we're getting ready to, to publish that. So I want to just let you know that that's coming, and uh, I'm excited about that. Also, we're going to begin having some events and uh, look uh, again at our Facebook page uh, and look out for uh, a ladies tea that's coming up uh, in the near future. And so we're going to just have lots of opportunities where we can just work together, uh, be together and celebrate our God. So I'm just happy to do that. So turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles, as we talk about trust, the foundation of restoration to Proverbs chapter three and verses five and six. It's a very familiar verse, and it reads this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. That's a great word. We'll focus on several points in that passage. First is all. You know, all. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Many times what I see is that we don't want to relinquish all. We want to hold on to things. And sometimes those things can be pain that we've experienced. Sometimes it can be things that we've done that, that uh, we wish we wouldn't have done and we can have trouble forgiving ourselves. But God says, trust him in everything, in all things. It doesn't matter how big or how small. He's asking us to put our complete and total trust in him. And then he goes on to say that lean not on your own understanding. You know, when we're traveling through this life, how many times have you gone through something and you really wrestle with trying to grasp what is the reason that this happened or we don't understand things in our lives? They can be tragic things. They can be things in our work, in our home, in our relationships. They can be just about anywhere. But when we don't have understanding, how do we gain that understanding? How do we, how do we capture that? I want to submit to you today that I believe that if we surrender ourselves to God, if we trust in Him, then He will give us the understanding we need and He will guide our paths. The, the path, I believe, is the path towards our understanding. What we see in our moment, in our affliction that we may be experiencing, in our situation that is occurring, we may not see the end. We may not be able to see uh, the forest for the trees. We may be like we're in a cave and it's dark and we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But you know what? Our God knows and our God does see the light. Our God will take us from a place of darkness to a place of light. Our God will lead and guide and direct us. But you know what we need to do? We need to trust in him. Trust in him that he has a way, that he'll make a way where there seems to be no way, that he will order our steps. But in order for that to happen, we must first trust in him. Trust, the definition, is a firm belief in the reliability truth, ability, or strength of someone or something, a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, the ability, or strength of someone or something. You know, in this life, even the people who we love the most uh, will fail us at times. They'll have, we'll have disappointments. You know, I try to be the best husband I can be, but I have many shortcomings, believe me. And I fall short. And I'm sure that there have been many times, I know for a fact there's been many times, where I've been a disappointment. It's not that Tracy can't trust in me, but when those things happen, it breaches your trust. Well, guess what? We have the opportunity to trust in a God who will never disappoint us. He will never let us down. He is a God that is holy, faithful, just, and true. And He doesn't change. He's consistent. And we can trust Him. Broken trust, when that happens in your life, just think about that. What happens? What emotional impacts do you have? When you look and you study it and, and people can, uh, you know, have written books about this, broken trust causes anxiety. It causes resentment. It causes disappointment. It creates a wall between us and whoever that we had and placed our trust in. Its effect often causes 
relationships to fail. Broken trust is a real significant thing. You know, you've heard the statement, time heals all wounds. Well, sometimes with trust, it takes a long time when trust is broken to again, again, put yourself in a place of vulnerability where you can once again trust. Guess what? When we trust in God, we don't have to worry about being broken. We don't have to worry about anxiety. The Bible says that we can and we should trust in the Lord with our whole heart, as our scripture says. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. The Bible says, the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. Don't these things uh, feel to you like trustworthy statements? And these aren't just words written down, but they are truth and truth for our lives. The Bible says, that Jesus tore the veil, the wall of separation between God and us. We said that trust ends up putting a wall between those who, who we thought we could trust and then that trust is breached. Jesus said, you know, I see that wall. The wall that was created by sin in our lives, the original sin of Adam and Eve, that wall separated us and the Bible describes that wall as a veil. And it isn't like just this frail piece of fabric, but it was thick and it was tall. It was impenetrable. You couldn't get to God. We were separated from him. And that's why we had to have animal sacrifices. But God said there's a better way. And that better way was sending his son Jesus to be the perfect, perfect sacrifice to take on our sin and the burden of our shame and just bear that all on the cross. Suffer a brutal death, beaten beyond recognition, buried in a tomb but hallelujah, rose again on the third day. That is a kind of God that we can trust. That is why we want to trust in our God, because he died for you. So certainly as he died for us, we can live for him and we can live a life of relationship with him where we can trust him. If he was willing to pay everything, certainly our trust can be put in him. I want to turn to 2 Samuel, and we're going to read chapter seven in chapter 7, verse uh, 28, 2 Samuel 7 and 28 it says this, Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy and you have promised these good things to your servant. You know, we are all servants of the most high God. And Samuel here is writing, 2 Samuel, it, it states, Sovereign Lord, you're you are God. First of all, we need to acknowledge He is God. He's the creator of all things. He's the mightiest and all-knowing one, ever-present. And He loves you. And He is trustworthy. Not just that we can trust Him, but here Second Samuel speaks that there's a covenant that seals His trust to us. Do you see that God gave everything for us? He created us. In his image, he loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. He paid a great price for each one of us. That kind of love, that agape, unconditional love that's extended to you, warrants us certainly to be able to trust him. Trust in him. Trust is a key component in our walk with God. Our fulfillment of our calling. Each one of us, the Bible says, before we were in our mother's womb, that God formed and shaped us. And it's in the womb that he knit us together to come into this world. But each one of us has a plan and a purpose for such a time as this that we are living in in this day. You are the best equipped to handle your situation. You are the best equipped to walk and talk in these times. You're the best equipped to be the member of the family that you are. Our fulfillment of our calling requires faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith requires trust because its walk is not directed <clears throat> by what is seen, but what is unseen. Faith is not what we see. It's not the tangible things that are in front of us, but faith requires us to trust in the mighty God. So today I have a question for you. That question is, is in whom do you trust? You know, we're going to trust something. We're going to trust somebody. We may trust only ourselves, but I believe we can answer that question confidently. In whom do you trust that we can say that our trust is in the Lord? And I want to give you three reasons why there should be no doubt that we should trust in God. First, number one, we should trust in God because God 
alone is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. God is faithful. Faithful, the Bible says, to a thousand generations. He will never leave. He will never forsake us. Part of the component of trust is saying, it's who, who is there for you? When you have times of trouble, who is there? God will never leave. God will never forsake. He's always there. He's always available to you. Sometimes we can feel like God has distanced himself from us, but nothing can be farther from the truth. Sometimes we've done that on our, on our own. Other times, he's beckoning us to draw closer. We may have God in our lives, but we aren't so intimate with him, that we're so close to him, that he, we have the relationship that God desires us to have. He, is ne he will never leave. He'll never forsake. He sent Jesus. This is what ultimately produces the reason for why we want to trust in God. Because he sent Jesus as a sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, for the shame uh, that we bore because of sin. He sent Jesus to die in our place. That alone, that great act of love, like no other act has ever been shown in human history, is reason alone to trust in God. We can trust in Him because He's trustworthy. Secondly, we trust in God because He is faithful. He is faithful God. We already said He's faithful to a thousand generations, but He's also the author and the finisher of our faith. He is who created us before in our mother's womb. It says He knit us together in the womb, but before that, it says He knew us. And He knew us and created us with plan, purpose, and a future a bright future for each and every one of us. He is faithful because he created us. He's the author and finisher of our faith. It's in him that from the very beginning of our existence to the very end of this life here on earth, we can trust him and we can have faith in him because he was there in the beginning and he will be there in the end. His thoughts and ways are higher. When we're talking about God being faithful, and we have to extend our faith. You know, we have situations every day in our life that we need to extend our faith towards God. In situations we don't understand or we can't comprehend, we don't have a solution. We need to have faith beyond our own understanding. It's what our foundation verse says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't just depend on what you can understand and comprehend. We have a mighty God, and the Bible says His ways and His thoughts are higher. That's why the Bible... <laughs> There's an airplane. That's why the Bible continually tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher. It's why the Bible says that we need to renew and transform our minds by the washing of the world word. It's why God instructs husbands that make your wife pure and holy by washing her with the word of the Lord. His ways are higher. Sometimes our mind cannot comprehend or understand, but his do. And his way is higher. We can have faith in him because he is faithful. <clears throat> To rise above our current situation, whatever that situation is where you find yourself, it may require divine in intervention. And God is the only one who can bring that divine encounter in our lives that will change our situation. We have to have faith, but the good news is, is He is faithful. So why should we trust God? Number one, He's trustworthy. Number two, He's faithful. And number three, and what we're going to conclude with is that we trust God because his blessings are eternal. Because of the price that Jesus paid on the cross, we have, as we accept Jesus into our hearts as Lord and Savior, the opportunity to live eternally with Jesus in heaven, as opposed to living eternally separated from God in a place called hell. God's blessings are eternal. He blesses obedience. When we walk in a place of obedience, when we walk in a place that we're doing things according to what is written in His Word and what He's instructed and given us in our minds and our ears and our thoughts, when we are obedient, He is faithful to bless us. He works all things together for our good. We can have trust in Him because we know in the end that He's working things for our good. That the enemy intends to do evil, the Bible says, but God will turn it to good. If we have faith in him and we trust in him, 
we will see great and marvelous things, impossible things that will happen, blessings that will be in our life that come from situations of great challenge and controversy. He alone is God who can bless us the way he can bless us. Because of his blessings, because of his faithfulness, because of his trustworthiness, we can trust in him. Trust in God, our scripture said today as we conclude. With all your heart, everything. God just doesn't want a partial commitment from you. He has entered into a blood covenant with you through the death of his son, Jesus Christ. And that covenant isn't something that you just walk away from. It isn't like a contract. God wants relationships so deep with you. It doesn't matter when accidents or mistakes happen. But he wants you to know that he, he is a forgiving God, that his grace is sufficient, that his mercy endures forever. And as you look to him and you see that that grace is sufficient, that that mercy does endure, and that applies to you, then that should just uh, elicit a response of trust. You can trust him. You can trust in the mighty God. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. Sometimes we don't know which way we need to go, but he does. If we stay in his shadow, if we stay close to him, if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us and he will lead and guide us. Our God is trustworthy. He is the light in our darkness. When we are blind and cannot see, he is the one who gives us sight. When we are hopeless and in a hopeless situation, he is our hope. When we're in the valley of the shadow of death, according to Psalm 23, we shouldn't fear, but we can know that God is trustworthy and he will lead and guide and direct us out of that place, out of that valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You can fear no evil because God is trustworthy and we should put our trust and faith in him. God is trustworthy. He is faithful and he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you beyond all that you can ask or think. So today I'm just wanting to encourage you, you know, look to God, turn to him, won't you? Turn to him and look to him and say, Lord, I trust you. I want to encourage you that, you know, we're starting a podcast and we're going to be publishing that soon. I'm going to share the story of when God asked me that question, Jeff, do you trust me? And it's what led us to our ministry in Tennessee. Because I responded to that, said, yes, Lord, I trust you. And he took me on a journey that's unbelievable and things happen that are beyond my comprehension. But I found that God was trustworthy, that God was faithful, and that God has blessed me because I trusted in him. So I want to encourage you to do the same today. God's asking you that question, do you trust me? And I believe that you can stand up and say, yes, Lord, I trust you. And when you do, just watch what happens. Watch what happens when you yield to him with all of your heart and lean not on what you can understand, but you allow him to guide and order your steps. You guide him to align and calibrate your thoughts and you'll see great and marvelous things. So go today, trusting in God and be blessed.